Way out west, there was this fella. Fella I want to tell you about. Fella by the name of Garrett Leon. At least, that was the handle his loving parents gave him. But he never had much use for it himself. This Leon, he called himself the Dude. Now, Dude, that's a name no one would self-apply where I come from. But then, there was a lot about the Dude that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And a lot about where he lived likewise. But then again, maybe that's why I found the place so darn interesting. Now this story I'm about to unfold took place in Los Angeles. They call Los Angeles the City of Angels. I didn't find it to be that exactly, but I'll allow that there were some nice folks there. I only mention it because sometimes there's a man. I won't say a hero, because what's a hero? But sometimes there's a man. And I'm talking about the dude here. Sometimes there's a man, well, he's a man for his time and place. He fits right in there. And that's the dude in Los Angeles. And even if he's a lazy man, and the dude was certainly that, quite possibly the laziest in Los Angeles County, which would place him high in the running for laziest worldwide. But sometimes there's a man. Sometimes there's a man. Well, lost my train of thought here, but... Oh hell, I don't introduce him enough. Garrett here from Garden First Cannabis. I'm a grower, a music junkie, and an avid outdoorsman. I'm always looking for new ways to better myself and my garden. Join me as we go behind the scenes to meet the incredible people behind today's most successful cannabis brands and hear the stories of their journey. This is Deep Roots. a secret gem they don't advertise so I'm hoping it's not gonna get too busy and I won't be able to get a table anymore but this place is Pache uh, it's Italian for peace it's been here for about 20 years there's like definitely a 60s rock and roll vibe going on we're in here. Laurel Canyon right yeah. now yeah this is like where the hippie movement started in the 60s there's a lot of interesting things about this place what's crazy is outside of here that's where Jim Morrison used to live you know it's kind of like or organics is more of an art hydroponics is more mathematics that's right right I see it as uh, combining the hemispheres of the brain yeah. one is a right brain approach it's based in intuition thousands of hours of experience one, as you said, is based in measurements, metrics, mathematics. It's left brain. And I think where cannabis is going, it's going to unify the both. Or we have to engage the brain and the heart. What's the progression of your cultivation and how you guys ended up merging and, and you know, built what source is today? Born and raised in the Bay Area. Been here 10 years. Came here specifically for cannabis. At that time, there wasn't a ton of high-grade indoor in LA. A lot of PGRs all the warehouse growers were using the same recipe. When you trim it and dry it all up and throw it in a turkey bag, it all looks the same. So I used to come down here and the flour I was bringing from up north, my own flour, and once in a rare while, other friends of mine, it was always a hit down here. Leaps and bounds better. Yeah, there was a never ending demand, right? And so I moved here to do it professionally. Aligned with a group that owned uh, five dispensaries at that time and two grows, started running their grows. And then uh, at that time we had a DEA raid they had 71 agents they had sent to LA. The aftermath of that resulted in he and I working together. Honestly, sometimes I kind of miss the wild, wild west because you never knew what was going to happen. But I also am very proud to be where I'm at now, you know, with my team and everybody. The reason we did legalization is because we didn't want what we had built in the past to just vanish. Right? Like we were talking about like recipes that nobody makes anymore because they're difficult, right? Yeah. Like this is good food. Nobody wants to make this because it's difficult to make. Nobody wants to make the cannabis we make because it's difficult to make. Was it originally called Source in 2003 when you started? Is that like always been? It was not called Source when I started. The, the concept of Source started in 2003. There's a lot of meaning to Source, right? Source is the origin of all creation. Our logo, the rings represent light, they represent life, they represent water, all the variables that are needed for plants to have amazing health. I will comment, you know, Source and in general, uh, legal cannabis is for everybody. So if there is the casual new user and they want to try it out, I certainly recommend trying Source. But it is, it is important to capture the heady culture too because that's what 
drives the evolution of this industry. The big tobacco attempt to take over of cannabis, is it gonna come, is it not gonna come? To some extent, headies like ourselves are not gonna buy their products. We're gonna look for folks like ourselves. That's why we help each other, even like in the industry, the people that came from the legacy. And you don't wanna finish, like you don't wanna cross the finish line alone. No. And a lot of people like before us that, you know, took more chances than we did. You know, so, you know, we have to honor them as well and try to help as much as we can to the community. And that's what we do. To good food and good people. Absolutely, my friend. Salute. Salute. So uh, we're here in your guys' mother room. It looks like you move a few phases of plants through. When are you actually cutting off of these moms? Are, are these the backup genetics to cut off of young plants or are you moving the young ones through to cut off of the older ones? That's right, we move the young ones through to cut off the older ones. These in front of us are typically about a month old, maybe a month and a half, you know, four to six weeks. Back there you have moms that are more in the two to three to four month range. We believe that by keeping them in veg that long, the genetics are able to be optimized once we cut clones. They produce great roots. So obviously, plant health throughout the cycle is important, but it all starts with the health of your moms. Um, so what are you using, particularly in an organic system, to make sure that uh, the plants are at their optimum health, getting ready to be cut into clones? We like to use Full Power and Silica by BioAg. They're two great products. They're clean consistent, minimize the use of pesticides and herbicides, and there are no heavy metals. It is a liquid product, and it really aids the nutrients in latching onto the roots and for better uptake into the plant. So obviously there's equipment failures, things go wrong, stuff goes down, uh, and occasionally in an indoor garden anywhere, you're gonna have things fall out of range of, of where you really want them. Uh, how are you preventing that from causing stress on the plants, especially in a room this important? That's where the silica product really comes in. It allows for abiotic and antibiotic stress reduction. And from that stress reduction in particular, you get heat and drought resistance. That makes sense, particularly, I mean, you're running one gallon pots, something falls out of range when they're six weeks old in a one gallon pot, that might dry out the roots pretty quick. That could be a game changer if you don't have the right stuff in the soil already. That it can be, and so the master grower's job is to ensure that never happens. Do you use a different soil blend for your moms, uh, or is it the same blend that you're using to move things through veg and flour? For ease of operation, we do use the same soil blend at all stages. The goal is to reduce the use of herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides so that we can be true to the mission and ethos of source. How's it going, Claudia? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing well. Um, tell me a little bit about your role here at Source. My role here is um, seeking out genetics. Did you have a background in any of that before coming here? Well, I have 10 years um, in the industry, cannabis, and okay. I've done pretty much everything from the front end to the back end, uh, growing myself as well um, on a personal note. And genetics is just something that I've always been interested in. Sweet, how did you uh, end up landing at Source? I was just looking for a different company, legalization. There's a lot of corporations and different ways of doing things. And they had an opening. I put in my resume and I got hired on. Well, 72 strains already in this facility in production. That's a lot as it is. But what is your goal when it comes to finding more? Like how many new strains are you trying to bring in? in <laughs> as in many a... as we can. Uh, we're doing a massive pheno hunt and that takes time. So right. we're trying to find the gems and we're currently running at least 60 different phenos. I think a lot of people are mixing a lot of the old school flavors with the new flavors. Bring some stuff from the old world and some stuff from the exotics and, and uh, see how they marry together. Exactly. What are your favorite strains that Source is growing? I mean, their quest is you I know, keep the hearing best. About it. I love it. It's my favorite. I'm a sativa smoker. It's, it's a great sativa. Well, for the audience out there, if you want to check out a full list of the genetics that Source is running here and grab some seed packs of your own, you can check out canacribs.org.
18 years since I've been to LA. I was just on a family trip. I don't even remember. Probably came here. Anything look familiar to you? I know you're pretty uh, well versed in vegetation and trees. I, I, I'm and not, we've been over this. You keep thinking that just because I know how to grow plants, I actually know about the native vegetation. Tell us how old this tree is. Uh, I don't know, we could chop it, check the rings, and, and <laughs> yeah. find out. We have the permits for that, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's up, man? Hi, how's it going? I'm Garrett. I'm Jacob, I come from Italy, and I'm a plant biologist here at uh, SperSource. I'm a cultivation manager, and uh, yeah, I work every day with Ali and uh, the team. Maybe I'll make it happen. What's the cannabis culture like in Italy? In Italy, it's pretty uh, slow, I can say. Uh, everything is uh, just coming out. Definitely, uh, we have uh, CBD grows. For sure, uh, the TSC is still uh, bended. That's why I moved here. I moved here to find a new world and hopefully source uh, become my new family. Propagation and veg is definitely one of the most important jobs in the building, right? If you do your job right, the flower team's job's pretty easy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, really hard to keep uh, the health of the plants always uh, consistent and on point, but that's the goal of source. And uh, once we dial it in all the uh, veg plants, the mum plants, for sure the flowers, they're going to reach the full potential. They're going to have a high standard flower like we do. If you're shooting to have, say, 600 plants in a flower room, how many clones do you actually cut to get there? Uh, we cut uh, at least 1,000 clones. Uh, we make sure that we always select the best of the best. We keep uh, high standards. Right now they are under T5 lights. We're gonna use uh, strategically the heat and the temperature that comes from those lights. But now we are uh, upgrading to LEDs. They're gonna um, spend pretty much two weeks, two, three weeks here under T5 lights and then we move on top. Uh, we have a CMH on top. Uh, we can have a better spectrum. So the plants, they actually develop uh, completely. So it's about two weeks in clone two to three weeks under the T5s, and then what, another two to three weeks under the ceramics? Uh, yes, definitely. They're gonna spend uh, yeah, at least eight weeks in total uh, to complete yeah, to complete the veg stage. Plus, uh, we always rotate and parabolize plants. That's, I think, super important. We make sure that uh, all the plants receive even lights, so in this way they can develop completely, and uh, we have always even canopy. Great. Smells great in here, Ali. Tell me about like what the process is of getting your plants from veg into here. Um, it looks like we're running a bunch of five gallon pots uh, of your soil blend. We are. Typically we veg in one gallon pots. They stay in veg depending on the variety, anywhere from five weeks up to maybe eight weeks. Once they're fully root bound, they're then brought into the flower room and transplanted from a one gallon into a five gallon. As you mentioned, we do use our own soil mix. We buy from different manufacturers and then mix them together okay. and add a little bit of perlite and dry granular food to get right. that boost upon transplant. There are different nutrient needs, as you know. In veg, it's more nitrogen heavy. And in flower, it's gonna be, especially towards the end of flower, more phosphorus and potassium heavy. We love BioBiz, manufactured in Spain. Several years ago, members of our team met some of the executive leadership from BioBiz at a cannabis conference. They're intrigued in helping the growers to optimize their output. Amazing company, amazing products. Is it a blend of slow release and quick release, or is it, is it liquids or powders, or is it kind of a blend of both? These are liquids, so the idea is a quick release or a more immediate action on the plants. Upon transplant, like I said, we do mix some dry granular organic food into the soil for a slow release over the first two to three weeks of bloom. You can use their products all the way through the entire cycle, um, from the time we transplant the clone all the way up until harvest or actually up until the flush. We try to flush for about three weeks. As you can imagine with soil, there are undissolved particles that stay in there a little bit longer than a traditional hydroponic medium. Uh, their products are all organic. Right. They're also all certified by third party organization uh, and we really love their products. It produces the best smell, the best scent, the best flavor, uh, amazing terpene profile, really rich cannabinoid development. What made you decide to do organic production indoors versus 
you know, a typical hydroponic or soilless media? One, it comes down to flavor, taste, quality of smoke. I do ingest the product that we grow ourselves. Second, I believe it's healthier, especially if you're a heavy user and you're ingesting it every day. When it's soil grown, it's a little bit closer to the plant's natural home. This is our flagship strain. It's called Quest. It's a rare Gorilla Glue Fino. Okay. And on the other side of the room, we have the Black Diamond OG, which just looks spectacular. It has that gassy smell that you would expect from an OG. Right. And it's got a tinge of purple in it, which the modern day Petty loves. Everybody just wants purple gas these days, I swear. It's the thing. It's the hot thing right now. Purple, gas, and potent. Yeah, yeah. exactly, right? That's right. just how weed grows. That's how, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Put it in a pot and that's what you'll get. What day do you pull trellis to keep everything supported? Or do you, you know, day one and let them grow into it? How do you, how do you shape the canopy? Day one, the first level of trellis goes in. And right around day 14 to 20, the second level goes in. We love the common culture trellis. We like to use it in every single bloom room. Props on hitting three a light, running organics. Not an easy thing to do. Yeah, it's definitely fall. That happened quick, huh? Like just last year it was fall, huh? Feels like just last year it was fall. <laughs> you know? Feels like every year around this time, the leaves fall off the trees and the weather gets cold. Oh, that's the observatory, right? It's in all the movies and the things. Is it foggy or is it smoggy? I don't know. Yeah, you can't really see much. How's it going, man? Pretty good. Garrett. Rob. Nice to meet you, Rob. Pleasure to meet you as well. Well, this is a super important part of the process. A lot can go wrong and a lot can go right here. Absolutely. Um, tell me a little bit about how you landed in the role of uh, overseeing all the drying and caring here at Source. Well, I've been in the cannabis industry for a long time before I acquired a job here. And it's just something that I just love to do. As soon as I got my role here, I moved up from the trimming department up to the post harvest department and that's where I'm at. So how many of these dry rooms do you have to service uh, all the flour? In this facility, we have two dry rooms, one being the offshoot, which is a storage room to put plants that we haven't finished harvesting yet. We hang all plants individually. We put temper rack to keep the airflow flowing through. It's a 60 degree environment here with a 50% humidity level. And we do seven days of drying, seven days of trimming, and seven days of curing. So a 21 day cycle altogether. When you pass off the dried product to your trimmers, do you have a team that bucks everything down for them day of, or is that something that's being done right on the table? So everything happens simultaneously. We give individual plants to the trimmers. They book, they trim, and they separate all. So back in those days, it was a, it was a bring your own scissors situation, but I imagine that's not what you have going here. No, we actually use Trojan scissors and we use common culture trim trays, which are the best trim trays on the market right now. They're ergonomically correct for my trimmers. Lightweight, you could trim on your lap if need be, or stand up and trim on the tables. Nice, yeah, I mean, it's overlooked. I mean, for one, trimmers are probably the biggest department at pretty much any grow facility just because right. it takes so much time to get through it all. Uh, but if you're trimming every day for a living, uh, it's hard on the wrists and it's hard on the hands. And if you've got the wrong equipment, that can catch up to you a lot faster. Big time. All right, Summer, Molly, two of my favorite things, two of my favorite people here at Source. Tell me a little bit about how you guys landed here at Source. It's my first cannabis job. Everyone's starting from different levels of uh, cannabis experience, but when you get in here, like the passion level is the same. Everyone's just really on board with the mission. Um, I come from Puerto Rico. Um, I moved there when I was 17, and then I went to Massachusetts, and there I had a little kind of part-time job um, with cannabis. From there I moved here, and then um, Summer told me about this job. How long have you guys been here? Both of us, two years and a half. Yeah, two and a half years, yeah. Two years, and where was the company two years ago compared to now? Oh wow, we've expanded tremendously. Not only our product line, but also our clientele like, has expanded. We service clients from as far south as San Diego, as far north as Humboldt County, and we just keep you know, getting bigger. So, so how many pre-rolls do you make a day? 
about 2,500. We have a, a tower team of about eight to nine people. How much flour is being packaged and moved out of here in a day? Flour, definitely more than 25 pounds a day. Our wares do everything by hand, as you can see. They do not break any nugs. They'll try different combinations. They've gone through a lot of extensive trainings before they sit down and weigh a pound. So I think it's pretty beautiful that we do everything with love from the moment we trim it to the moment it gets put into the jar. And hopefully everybody feels it when they open the jar. Passion in every puff. Mm -hmm. What are you guys' favorite things to smoke from Source? I have to stick with Quest. Quest? Yep. That's what I keep hearing. Mm hmm It's like that perfect, happy, giggly high. Makes me feel like me a too. Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Quest is, is my favorite strain. It is not only my favorite strain that I've smoked, but it's also like my favorite strain to look at and yeah. when we're weighing it out, it's just, it smells, smells like home. Well, I keep hearing about the Quest nonstop all day. Um, I'm super excited to go pick some up and, uh, and try some with the rest of the crew. Excited for you guys to try it. Yeah, we really are. So I probably enjoy Welcome to Urban. Hi, how's it going? I'm Garrett. Nice to meet you. I'm Lacey. I'm the buyer here at Urban. Oh, you're the buyer. I work with a lot of you back in Oregon. It's really cool. It's, it's been a journey and we're expanding, so it's it's really nice. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, as the buyer here, what are you looking for? What led you towards Source and stocking your shelves in general? Source is just a great product overall. The quality of the flower never disappoints. Other than being clean, green certified, this also is soil grown too. It's another great thing that Source does. Yeah, I mean, flower grown from soil is just generally better flavor profiles, cleaner burn, you know, no headache, no throat ache. It's just commendable because it's 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 a lot harder work than doing hydroponics. And, uh, yeah, it was really cool getting to see. You got a pretty decent menu. Uh, what are your favorites? Quest is a really really nice sativa. It's our number one bestseller. I think it might be like one of the best-selling sativas in California right now. Wow. It lives up to the name. You feel like you're going on a quest after you yeah. smoke it. Like you're ready. <laughs> so Just ready to go on a journey. It's that sativa yeah. that you want. Like that uplifting, energetic. It mm -hmm. sounds like we gotta try the Quest. Um, I'm interested in the Sunday Driver. That one's just gotten popular everywhere lately and I wanna see how, how well Source does it. All right, here you go, man. All right, thank you so much, Lacey. I appreciate your time this morning. Well, this is a beautiful rooftop you guys got here. Not a bad situation. Not at all. Great spot to hang out. What are we digging into today? We're digging into some dabs. We're digging into a bunch of different joints. What's up with the dabs? Well, this is strawberry cough. This is live rosin. And I, it's my favorite, personally. I, it, and that's all we're going to be basically selling. Oh, here we go. See, once it dances like this, I got to hit it. Excuse me. Yes been keeping that strawberry cough cut alive for a long, long time, like near a decade. Yeah. It's the original cut, you know, yeah. it's the famous one, the only one really. Just recently ran a couple batches of it for the rosin. Turned out amazing, phenomenal. Tastes so great. did you do um, straight flour to rosin or did you fresh. wash it first? We washed it. Washed it, it and then- It was and fresh then frozen. It. Yeah, obviously like being a business owner and growing a business, especially in an industry evolving this quickly can eat up a lot of time. But what do you guys do for fun outside of this? The main thing I wanna really people understand is that we just don't wanna lose the culture. You know, We make less money because we keep the culture going. I don't care though, because we're rich in other ways. Like we have a community, we have a tribe. Yeah. So it kind of seems like your work is more than just your work, right? Like it's a part of your your spiritual journey. I think that cannabis, uh, it, look, it's, it's not necessarily for everybody, but for the people it is for, it can serve as a part of a health lifestyle, wellness lifestyle, self-exploration with, with like the martial arts and yoga. 
um, you know, meditation practice, hanging out with friends and family. I like that you brought up hanging out with friends and family as a part of health and wellness. It's easy for us, for master growers, so to speak, to spend many, many, many hours a day or a week immersed in a canopy. It's good to get out and then share some love with humans. Thanks for letting me try all the flavors. Thanks for the beautiful rosin. I'm stoked for you guys to actually start making that for real. We are, we are. We're introducing uh, it soon. Yeah, I mean, we're not actually leaving the scenes just so much. This is part of the LA <laughs> experience right here. LA's finest yeah. hovering overhead. The dude abides. Well, that about does her. Wraps her all up. Things seem to have worked out pretty good for the dude. And it was a pretty good story, don't you think? Made me laugh to beat the band. I don't know about you, but I take comfort in knowing that he's out there, the dude, taking it easy for all those sinners. I guess that's the way the whole darn human comedy keeps perpetuating itself. Down through the generations, westward the wagons, across the sands of time and Tui. Oh hell, look at me. I'm rambling again. Well, I hope you folks enjoyed yourselves. Catch you later on Down the Dusty Trail. This guy's a foodie, he's Jewish. I'm Muslim, but we're both human, yeah. and uh, we both love food, so. <laughs> yeah. Nice work. Not only do we learn how to grow fire weed, we solve world peace. So. We just did to peace. Pache, to peace. That's what we've done, to peace. That's what we've done, to peace. That's what we've done.